You know, I feel like singing that. In the old days, in the 70s, whenever the game on Monday night got out of control, Don Meredith sang, Turn Out the Lights, okay? So I don't want to sing Turn Out the Lights. It's kind of a bittersweet time to be talking to Keith Gaddy. If you look at the nameplate under there, if, the, if Nick will put that up one more time, it's Keith Gaddy, and underneath it, it says TCU political scientist. So it's the worst kept secret now that OU's Keith Gaddy via Georgia, where the, they're celebrating two football championships. But you've been there for OU football championships. Mm -hmm. You're off to Texas to TCU. So help us understand, first off, what you're doing at TCU. Okay. Uh, TCU recruited me into an endowed chair, which a gift was given to the university to create a professorship. And so there's a multi-million dollar gift, and the interest on that gift pays my salary and pays for me to do research and to work with students. And it's called the Hoffman Family Chair in the American Ideal. Help us understand, uh, a lot of your students, including John Eccles, who you mm -hmm. see on, on Sundays here. John and I were talking when you came into the studio, and it was basically, I want to ask my professor, is American democracy going to survive what's going on? It better. <laughs> it better. Um, yeah, we... Uh, you know, we, we fight over what is democracy. A lot of ways to define it. Uh, but it has to start with a fundamental assumption. A political scientist from out in West Texas named V.O. Key said this years ago, he ended up at Harvard, that one of the main assumptions we have to make is that we will count the votes as cast and that the losers will accept the result and not shoot each other. And so right now we're right at the cusp of it not working because losers are not accepting fair vote counts and they're trying to shoot each other. There's a lot of violence out there. It comes from one particular direction in our politics. It comes from the right wing. This both sidesism is nonsense. The violence that threatens the stability of the institution comes from the far right wing in the United States. They can't accept an election result other than the one that they want. And part of playing the game, whether it's politics or sports or anything, part of calling the game is accepting the count, continuing to play the game, and then trying to come back and win. Otherwise, it's just mob rule. And democracy shouldn't be mob rule. That's why we have institutions. What sort of experiences do we take away at this particular time in history in Oklahoma about where we're headed here? See, I actually think Oklahoma, I was reflecting on this coming in this morning. I think Oklahoma actually may be in good shape. And here's the thing, now that I'm retired from OU, I can say, if we can survive this governor and his inability to understand how institutions work and how a representative democracy works, how treaties work, how legislation works, we'll be fine. And we are gonna survive because the legislature gets it. The legislature finally gets it, that they came to make policy. You listen to these men talking this morning, they get it and they know how to govern, and they've come to govern. So we've survived the knucklehead stuff, but now it's about getting people in the executive branch who also understand that governing is not being a CEO, standing up saying, do this, do that, and I'm gonna ignore the law. No, it doesn't work that way. Quite a few of the folks at the legislature that study under Keith Getty at the University of Oklahoma, in terms of basically the political class that's up and coming, and they're coming fast, and they're very young, mm -hmm. are you optimistic about it? I'm feeling better about it. I'm feeling better about it. And, you know, it's fun for me if I look at the folks who are at the top now. I just had the privilege to open the door the one day, and there, there they were, right? I opened the door one day, and here's John Eccles or Greg Treat or, you know, Forrest Bennett, if you want to go to the other side of the aisle. I think I've had something like 40 lawmakers in my classes over the years. They get it, and they know. And they came to govern, and they're capable of doing most anything. But they came to govern, and they have respect for institutions. Not that they should stay the same, but they respect that there's a process you follow to change things. And yeah, you need to exert pressure on, on the outside, but I am feeling better about what's coming up. I think these uh, kids are a lot more thoughtful. I think that the folks coming up on the left have got a deeper appreciation of markets and the need for local government. I think the folks on the right are getting past the strong inflection of evangelicism that had come into Republican politics for a while and then spawned this other thing off there on the right that we're dealing with with Trumpism. So I'm, the next generation, I'm feeling good looking forward. What I fear for is the folks that don't get to come to college, that don't make their way into governing, right? That's the problem. And if they're feeling disfranchised, they don't feel like they've got any, uh, any skin in the game, it's mighty tough for us to think that they're gonna have confidence in the process. Wish you the best of luck. It's bittersweet, but we know you're not going away far. And like you said, Kim is staying, so 
Well, you know, we, we still have the best Gaddy in Oklahoma. <laughs> well, she'll be happy to hear that because I agree with you. Okay. Keith Gaddy, now at TCU. Yes, sir. As of two days ago, and we're really glad to see you and wish you the best of luck and look forward to seeing you again. Awesome. Hey, thanks for watching Hot Seat. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts where you can see the whole interview. Be sure and follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Threads, and Facebook at Mitchell Talks.